Greetings viewers, Eric the Car Guy here, also known as ETCG1 on this channel. And yes, of course, if it is your birthday, I want to personally wish you a happy birthday. Today's video, well, is actually the second time I've shot this video because events that have happened earlier this week uh, with the Tesla crash have changed the whole tone of this thing. So if I would have put out the video that I put out before, everybody would be telling me, hey, what about that crash? Well. Here I am remaking that video and revisiting this topic, and that is who is at fault uh, when it comes to vehicle collisions or vehicle damage caused by automated vehicles. It is tragic what happened. I mean, anytime somebody loses their life, it's, it's a tragic thing, and, and my condolences to the, to the family members. As far as who is at fault here, well, it's already been said that there was a DVD player found in the car, so it appeared as though the driver was not really paying attention to what was happening, perhaps watching a movie at the time that the accident occurred. And basically what had happened is it was a Tesla vehicle that has an automatic drive feature uh, that pretty much you can take your hands off the wheel and it will drive down the road. And what had happened in this instance was there was a tractor trailer that turned out in front of the vehicle. It wasn't seen by the radar and it wasn't interpreted by the visual system and the vehicle just went at speed into the side of this tractor trailer. As far as the visual side of the system, it's set up to look for anomalies. It's very similar to the technology you used whenever you're taking a picture with say your cell phone, how there's that little square that goes around your face. There's an algorithm that's written that looks at the image as a whole, all the pixels on that image and interprets some of the parts of that image as perhaps being somebody's face, so that it focuses on that point. So there's an algorithm that does that. Well, similarly, in the system that Tesla uses, it looks for these anomalies. Unfortunately, in this case, it was a white tractor trailer against a sky that was a very similar color, so there was really no differentiation between the two things, and it didn't see it as an object. As far as the radar side of things, the tractor trailer is up high, there's space underneath, and apparently it missed the space underneath. So in other words, it didn't see the tractor trailer. So this is uh, an interesting situation and something that some of you have brought up in other videos that I've done about uh, vehicles that drive themselves and, and the future of, of driving. I'll link those videos down in the description so that you can uh, check those out. But a lot of you brought up in the comments, you know, well, what happens if there's an accident? And say, for instance, this wasn't just somebody crashing into a tractor trailer. What if it hit a bunch of pedestrians or, you know, did something even more horrific? Who's at fault? Is it the car company that's at fault uh, because their system failed? Or is it the fault of the driver for not recognizing the situation and not paying attention? So we get into this catch-22 situation where, you know, we set up the vehicle to drive in an automated fashion so that we don't have to pay attention, but even Tesla states and in their literature and everything that the system is not a perfect system and the driver needs to be aware of what's happening. And in this instance, it appeared that the driver was watching a movie. Tesla basically is gonna say, we use this disclaimer, we put it out there, we didn't claim this as a driverless car, it's just a feature of the car. I don't know the law enough to say one way or the other if they're gonna get you know, some sort of prosecution because of this. I don't think they will, because as I said, there's a disclaimer that states that the driver needs to be aware of the situation and able to step in and, and take control and say, oh, hey, it's a tractor trailer, car didn't see it. I need to step on the brakes now. I guess it really comes down to when we get to that point where they say they have a system that is good enough to drive itself. I mean, Google's had these cars that have been driving themselves around for a while, testing, figuring out the bugs. I'm sure Tesla's gonna take the information from this instance and you know, try to make their vehicles better. Uh, they don't want this to happen. I mean, no car company wants things like this to happen. So it's not like they go out and purposely do this or purposely miss something that could cause something like this. There's so many variables out in the world. I mean, you build something. I'm building a car now and it's an old car, and, and, but there's a lot of tiny details that go into that, even more so with a new vehicle and all the federal regulations and fuel mileage and all that stuff that you need to conform to. I know it's a Tesla, it's an electric car, but. But my point is, there's a lot of engineering involved, a lot of thought involved, and you can't think of everything. In a system like this, I think it's even more of an issue because, okay, you have no contrast between the white tractor trailer and the sky that's behind it. Therefore, the car is virtually blind in that instance. So who's at fault? Well, I really can't say who's at fault, but I think that's gonna be the real question going forward with autonomous vehicles. And that's, can we have a system that we can prove would be autonomous and we need to work out the legislation as far as if there's an issue such as what happened with Tesla, who's at fault? How do we work that out? Is there a certain set of rules that we need to set ahead of time? I wonder if there'll be a time where we have autonomous vehicles and they have to meet certain standards. So maybe they have some tests that's set up 
that says that you pass this test, the Kobayashi Maru, <laughs> if you will. And uh, if you can pass the test, great. If not, then your vehicle is not going to be uh, certified to be an autonomous vehicle. I think maybe that's the direction we need to go. I think maybe we need to have some sort of certification, but at the same time, that certification process could be flawed. Emissions testing, for instance, that doesn't necessarily work out because it hasn't really been proven to reduce emissions all that much. Not to say that it's not a good thing to some degree, but in some cases, it's more like an extra tax on people. That's a discussion for another another video. But my point is, is that government coming in and saying, okay, these are the mandates, this is what you have to conform to. Okay, we have a set of rules, but the governments of the past haven't necessarily proven to be very good at making those rules because I guess lawyers are very good at finding loopholes. I'm not sure. Anyway, it's, it's an interesting question. It's an interesting topic. I wanted to put it out there to you. Once again, uh, my condolences to the family of the person that, that perished in that crash. Uh, but I want to put the question to you. I mean, what do you think the solutions are with autonomous vehicles? Who is at fault? And how are we going to move forward with this? Because autonomous vehicles are, are on their way. Uh, they're here already. Now it's just a question of perfecting it and figuring this part of it out. I think this is going to be harder to figure out than the actual technology to get this stuff to work, is where I'm coming from. Because as I said, I think Tesla will take the information from this and other manufacturers that, that uh, want to make autonomous vehicles, they will look at this and say, we don't want this to happen. How can we engineer this problem out? And there we go. Anyway, the question goes back to you. Hey, if you have automotive questions, I'd ask you to head over to airatthecarguide.com. I'll put a link in the description for you. Also links to other pertinent information, including uh, information about this crash and perhaps if I can dig some up about uh, autonomous vehicles and how they work and operate and all that kind of stuff because the technology is really cool. Google+, Plus, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, if you wish to connect with me socially, be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time.